What's going on guys, Carmine here, and lately I've been hearing some rumors among the community about this new theory involving Cersei and her ever-growing insanity. The theory states that Cersei Lannister will be backed into a corner so much so that she will go crazy after losing her son Tommen and her position in King's Landing and attempt to destroy the entire city by using wildfire, just as Danny's father, the Mad King, tried to do almost 20 years earlier. Does this theory have any merit to it, or is it just another crackpot theory? Let's take a look. Now, in order to understand and break this down, we have to talk about visions and prophecies. In the beginning of Season 5, we see a young Cersei Lannister on a quest to seek out a fortune teller named Maggie the Frog. Cersei being, well, Cersei, threatens Maggie to tell her what's in store for the future, and it doesn't seem too bright. While the television show has left out some parts of the fortune telling, I will go into the book version, which I think is key to the whole theory, and makes it extra exciting and sad at the same time. Cersei asks Maggie three questions, and the first one is, when will I wed the prince? Here Cersei is asking Maggie if she'll marry Rhaegar Targaryen, who is Danny's brother. But Maggie replies, never. You will wed the king. Which came true. Cersei ended up marrying Robert Baratheon. Maggie's answer here kind of confused Cersei, but she assumed she would marry Rhaegar only after his father had died. Her next question is, will I be the queen though? To which Maggie replied, queen you shall be, until there comes another, younger and more beautiful, to cast you down and take all that you hold dear. And finally, Cersei's last question was, will the king and I have children? And Maggie's reply here is the key, and she says, oh I, six and ten for him, and three for you. Gold shall be their crowns, and gold their shrouds, she said. And when your tears have drowned you, the Valonqar shall wrap his hands around your pale white throat and choke the life from you. Now this clearly pisses her off, but let's dissect this a little, shall we? The first question we've already answered. Cersei did marry the king, Robert Baratheon, who won the throne by killing Rhaegar. The second question is, will she be the queen? And Maggie's answer is where we get to the bulk of it. Cersei will be a queen for a time, which she was, until a younger and more beautiful woman will come to cast her down and take all that she holds dear. This here is subject to much debate among the community because the woman could literally be half the females in the series. Some have pointed to Daenerys, which would be my first guess, but others have pointed to Marjorie Tyrell. Marjorie is younger. Whether she's pretty or not, it really depends on the person, but the part about her taking what she holds dear, Cersei feels like Marjorie has gotten a hold of Tommen, which isn't exactly wrong. Marjorie has manipulated Joffrey in the past, and even Tommen in the previous season. The person Maggie could be talking about also includes Sansa or Arya Stark, out for revenge. Now that Sansa has supported the Vale, she could pose a problem for Cersei, especially if she was able to gather more allies like the Martells. Arya is also a prime candidate if you throw in her assassination skills. The last question is about her children. Maggie was a little devious here, and she managed to confuse young Cersei a little, but we understand it all too well. The king will have 16, but she'll have 3, and that was true. King Robert was kind of a man whore who had multiple children with many different women. We see Joffrey ordering their deaths in the first episode of season 2. Cersei did indeed have 3 children, with her brother Jaime, but the last part is the most haunting. Gold shall be their crowns, and gold their shrouds. As for the crowns... I won't go deep into book territory here, but you could say that this means they will be royalty. As for shrouds, well, a shroud is a length of cloth or an enveloping garment in which a dead person is wrapped for burial, and a golden shroud is fit for royalty. The last part is that the Valonqar will kill her. For those of you who don't know, Valonqar is High Valyrian and it means little brother. Cersei later finds this out. Judging by all of this, you can assume what Cersei is thinking here. After Maggie's words coming true, you'd think Cersei would be on alert, and she is, but... Because this is Cersei and how most of her plans almost always fail, she's probably gotten it all wrong. She probably thinks the younger, more beautiful person to come and take her place is Marjorie Tyrell and the Valonqar is Tyrion. But as I've stated before, the younger, more beautiful person to take that she holds dear could be a number of people. But what about the Valonqar? Well, that also ranges from person to person. My favorite candidate is Jaime Lannister, simply because I think it would be incredibly Shakespearean to have these two lovers go down in such a tragic way. I'll get to the reason why I believe it's Jaime in just a minute. But the other people could include Sandor Clegane, the Hound, who could be coming in to defeat her champion, the Zombie Mountain, in a trial by combat, which would put her up for death. But this is only in the book, however. It could also include Stannis Baratheon, who in the books is still alive and is currently gearing up for a fight against the Boltons. It could also be Arya Stark disguised as Tommen, which is another popular theory. But let's move back to the point here. What does this all have to do with the Mad Queen theory? Well, Maggie's prophecy is quickly coming true and Cersei can see this. The final straw in what's keeping her together is her son Tommen. We've seen it multiple times. Cersei loves her children and she lives for them. She already has two of her kids die and the last one could send her over the edge. 
Not only that, but the Faith has been pushing her against the corner and have stripped her of her power and sense of dignity and also her clothes. Cersei is seen as a joke, and even though she isn't branded, she still carries the mark of shame. For someone like her who constantly looks down on everybody else with her head held high, it's not acceptable. She needs revenge. In an early episode of Season 6, we find that Cersei wants Kyburn to use his network of spies to find out who is talking about her in an unfavorable way, which is very telling. But her actions have surrounded her with enemies. In Season 6, Episode 7, Olenna says it best, Cersei has no support, Jaime is gone, and the other Lannisters have abandoned her, and the people of King's Landing hate her. But then Olenna says, you gonna kill them all by yourself? And that's when the show plays its lovely foreshadowing game. How can one woman kill thousands of her enemies at once? How can she save face and prove she's not someone to be fucked with? Wildfire. In episode 8, we see that Kyburn has come to her with a rumor that his spies have investigated. Could this rumor be the cache of Wildfire that Tyrion found out about in season 2? Cersei has probably heard rumors about how most of it decimated Stannis' fleet. Maybe she wants to use it against the High Sparrow and the people of King's Landing who have pretty much slut-shamed her at the end of Season 5. Now, here is where we tie this all together with the visions we've seen so far. In Season 6, Episode 6, we see that Bran is having multiple visions, and one of them is a couple of men handling wildfire, and later on it explodes inside a tunnel. Why are we seeing this? Why is wildfire being set off in a tunnel, possibly under the Red Keep, in a vision Bran is having about the past. Perhaps it's not in the past, but in the future, and what Bran is seeing is her plan come to fruition. That Cersei is planning to use wildfire to burn King's Landing. This is actually foreshadowed twice. First, in episode 9 of season 6, when Tyrion tells Danny that her father, the Mad King, had a bunch of wildfire under the Red Keep and under the city to burn everyone, but it was never set off because Jaime was able to kill the Mad King and the Alchemists in time. The second time is in episode 8 when Jaime tells Edmure that Cersei would quote unquote burn cities to ash to protect her children. Since Cersei is unable to use the mountain in the trial by combat to win against the sparrows, it's possible that she may take drastic action against them, enough to kill all of them in one strike and wildfire would definitely be the way to do it. One last vision we've gotten from several seasons ago is very telling. Back in the season 2 finale when Danny is having a vision in the House of the Undying, she walks through the throne room in King's Landing and it's all covered in snow and appears to be in ruins. Could this also be another vision of the future in which Cersei's plan comes true? Maybe when Tommen dies and they commence the trial for her, she may go over the deep end and want to burn them all, but will Jaime let her? The reason I believe Valonqar is Jaime is because these two are destined to go down together, and he saved King's Landing once before, and I believe he'll do it again to save the people and Cersei from herself. In the television show, Jaime is very much in love with her, and that is why I think he would do it, to end her suffering. But let me know what you guys think about it. Do you think Cersei will soon go insane from the loss of her son and try to burn her enemies down with wildfire? And who do you think will be the one to end her life? Will it be Jamie or someone entirely different? Leave your thoughts below, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.